Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna make a fun um, decoupage pot to hold some brushes. And I was inspired by these napkins that I picked up uh, at Michael's from the Jane Davenport um, mixed media collection. And then Jane was super sweet and she sent me some of her newer ones a couple months ago. And I thought I'd really love to have that design on a pot. And um, I was cleaning and I found this brand new plant pot and I thought this would be cool. But instead of just decoupaging right onto the clay pot, I thought I probably ought to paint it first that way um the like because sometimes when you like decoupage tissue paper it gets really um transparent so i'm going to start by um painting on some white first just to uh cover it up on the outside and i'm going to do this teal on the inside this doesn't have to be perfect i just basically want to have um a white undercoating to collage onto but i think one coat's going to be fine for this I was worried that I took out too much paint, but um, terracotta is porous and it really soaks up quite a bit. So, um, so that's good. I'm not going to be wasting this. Since I do have extra white, I am going to go and do a coat of white on the inside and then I'll go over with a coat of teal afterwards. After the white on your plant pot is dry, you're going to want to get your napkins ready to collage and you need to separate the um, printed area from the non-printed sheet. And the best way to do this is to just grab a piece of tape. Masking tape works really well, but I think washi tape would work as well. And um, probably any tape, scotch tape or whatever you have. And then I like to just press it onto the corner of the napkin. And then you can pull, you can kind of pick at the uh, printed side and pull that up and the and the uh, plain side is going to stay stuck to the tape. Can you see that? And that way you're able to pull off the unprinted side. Now I'm going to save the unprinted side. I'm just going to use that for like when I'm painting as like cleanup or dabbing my brush. So you don't have to like throw it away. Um, you definitely can reuse it, but it's just going to be a hindrance when you go to decoupage. Be gentle when you pull apart these layers so you don't uh, rip your napkin, but that's how you do that. And um, I got these when they first came out. Um, you get quite a few of the same designs, so um, you can always get a package of these and share them with a friend. I also get the napkins, like pretty napkins that I see at the store, um, but of course there's way more patterns than you'd ever probably use yourself. So um, you can join groups on Facebook to do napkin swapping and stuff. Uh, so it's, it's a nice option if you don't want to have so many, um, so many of the same napkins on hand. I'm going to start by tearing the napkin into some different um, pieces so it'll be a little bit more manageable. You can uh, cut it if you prefer, but when you tear, you don't get such a um, harsh line and it will be a little bit easier to work with. I think all my paint is dried on my craft sheet there, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. I did manage to get a little scrap of paint there, but I'm not going to let that bother me. And I really like these faces. These will be my kind of focal point. So I'll put these on first and then I'll fill in with the, um, with the swatch, the swatch napkin. So what I'm going to use to adhere this is some Mod Podge. You could use any sort of decoupage medium you have. It doesn't, or even white glue. It doesn't matter. I will be covering this with a, um, with a, probably an oil-based sealant actually, like a spray sealer, just to make sure it's really durable. I find that Mod Podge can be a little tacky, especially, um, especially the gloss Mod Podge, and I do like to have a gloss on like pottery because um, that way dust will wipe off of it really easily. And I'm going to select one of these and just kind of lay it down and then just gently tap it in with my fingers. I'm not going to worry about wrinkles because I'm going to brush over with the Mod Podge and that will smooth out any little wrinkles. My goal here is just to get the, um, the pattern on. See, when you brush over it, it does like make the wrinkles kind of mold into the uh, surface and disappear. So you don't have to worry too much about that. And just continue on around till you've got that first um, pattern down everywhere. Thank you. 
if you overlap, you are going to see both patterns. So um, just keep that in mind. Keep what's like underneath in your design plan as well, because you will be able to see both. So I don't want to use all of this because I'm just going to be overlapping. So I'm just going to tear off the piece that I want. And I'm going to put a coat over everything. Make sure that you give it a good coat because if your brush is dry, it's going to want to tear at the napkin. And your Mod Podge is going to dry clear, so if it looks milky right now, don't worry about that. Now I'm going to use little bits of the swatch paper just to fill in areas where I feel like I want a little bit more color. right here I'd like a little something so I'm gonna find a little piece of swatch it's hard to to kind of tear this with um, with your <laughs> painty fingers so you might want to pre tear some smaller pieces of your contrasting pattern you leave the pieces big of your main pattern and then just kind of tear the pieces of the smaller contrasting pattern and actually it didn't take as much as I thought it was going to so you could definitely get by with just one pattern if you wanted to I like to kind of tear it against an edge that way I'll have a nice clean um, edge to work with because I'm going to want to paint the rim I think a contrasting color I'm thinking I'll do the inside teal and or aqua and the rim gold so I don't want to have too much excess like hanging over the edge I'm going to want to seal that down really well all right I think I'm pretty happy with how that looks I'm going to move my leftover pieces out of the way so I can use them for another project Maybe you have some more clay pots in the garage. And I'm going to give this, actually I'm going to squirt that onto my craft mat, and I'm going to give this a final kind of sealing just so that I know all these little pieces will stick down. And then I'm going to let this dry completely. Tear off any excess that I have here at the top. I'm also giving the inside of this a coat of the aqua colored paint um, because I can set this here to dry. Um, if you're going to do this, just make sure you don't handle the outside of the pot while you're working on it so that you don't end up um, damaging the tissue. You're going to want to let this set down to dry for a couple hours before you go on to the next step. But we're almost done. After your decoupaging is dry, you can take some of the accent color and you can kind of fill in a little bit. If you have texture or ridges in areas, um, you can kind of pick that up with the edge of your brush. I would try not to overdo it because you don't want to cover up all of the cool um, patterns on the tissue, but it does um, just tie that color in a little bit more. As my last finishing touch, I'm just going to take some gold paint and I'm going to put that along the rim. Um, now, one thing I wish I had done a little differently when I was decoupaging, I wish I had paid a little more attention to the tissue paper and, pour, and uh, tore that off instead of letting it go into the inside of my, um, of my pot, but it's going to be all right. When this is filled with pens, it's going to look really cute and it's not really going to matter that uh, that that's there, but um, when I do another one of these, I'm definitely going to be tearing off the excess um, tissue paper before it gets onto the inside. Because where you have just a flat color like that teal, you can really see it. Um, I'm going to give this probably two coats. Just let it dry in between coats and then give it a final sealer of your choice just to protect it from wear and tear. 
And there you can see the pot is completely done. I think it looks super cute when it's filled with my supplies. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you try something like it with the supplies you have on hand. If you did enjoy this, please give me a thumbs up and you can check out the video description for links to the supplies that I used. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.